Hello everyone and welcome to race number two of this Pocono doubleheader weekend. We're here at Pocono again for this time the Reese's 300. 40 drivers in the field, the same 40 from yesterday's race. But we're going to see which one of them can drive through the field to try to win today. Because the front of this grid is something maybe we'll never see in a regular qualifying format, and that's what makes these doubleheader weekends so special in the Crown World Truck Series. You see a lot of underdogs who maybe had a pretty bad start to race number one could bring it up and have some track position see themselves up front for this race. It's Logan Cloud and Nelson Reeves on the front row. Nelson Reeves in a three-year-old Chevrolet Silverado. The Chevy team discontinued support for Chevrolet. They moved to GMC. Impala stayed with the Chevys that they had. They have a bunch in the shop still. They actually bought a good few of them off of some of the teams that were transitioning when GMC came in. So they have a pretty big stock in the shop that they work on. So as long as they keep them clean, they will continue probably to enter some truck races. But they roll off in second. Nelson Reeves, a miracle driver for Impala this year. Mikey Yamakaze, Logan Bradley, row two. If you're taking a look at it, Bradley's probably the best bet to go out there and lead some laps. 96 and 03, we're off the pace for a good bit of the race. So we'll see what Logan Bradley can do if he could charge through the field. Starting fourth again, we'll see if he gets spun again. Anderson Reed rolls off fifth in front of the home crowd, Pocono. Diego Yepes rolls off sixth for MJM. Preston Emmons, seventh. Maxwell Fay, eighth. Jay Jefferson, ninth. Colton Lane in tenth. Look at the rest of the way. We have a good group of drivers up here. You got Vince Freeze who can charge his way up. Matt Sladek, Jesse Turner looking for a better start. Zach Rogers, Priya McShane running pretty much around where they were in the race before. William Duncan is going to have a better starting spot there in that 82 truck than the rear of the field for that event. Aiden Smith back there, Peter Ronjak, and here's where all the heavy hitters are. You got Spurley to Butcher, Johnson, Downey, Stephen Wallace Jr., Cobza, Peters, uh, yeah, Antoine Smith, Matthew Eves, and Jose Perez is up there. Mike Cook fell one lap down right at the end of the race. He rolls off 39th. And Eli Bright with that flat tire issue in the 8 truck. Lost so much time, he ends up in 40th. Not much more to talk about in this race. Just know the field is inverted. All the lead lap cars were inverted from the finish of the Crown Royal Truck Series event yesterday. Of the Hershey's 300. We're at the Reese's 300 now for the doubleheader weekend. We have this race for another 40 laps. The fuel window seeing about over 20 laps means we could see just one pit stop again if these guys do indeed go green and stay clean. But maybe we'll have to see if Logan Bradley will get turned again uh, to see if he does spread out the field. But we're getting ready to go down trackside for the commands. The second race of this doubleheader weekend is going to kick off right here at Pocono. Let's go head down trackside for the commands to fire the engines here at the Reese's 300. With that, the engines are fired. 40 drivers rolling off for 40 more laps at Pocono this weekend. Pocono's a fan favorite track. It's been on the schedule, I think, since season two. I don't remember if it was in the inaugural season of Mountain Dew Custom Series. It's been a great track. We've had some great races here. Mountain Dew Custom Series does not come here anymore, uh, which is kind of sad that they can't join us for this weekend of PA racing. But the MDCS has a ton of great tracks during uh, the rest of the season that we see that are some kind, uh, some of them being uh, MDCS exclusive tracks. And just like I-69, maybe we'll see some of those in the Cup and Truck Series this season. But we're looking at it. This is going to be the chaotic race. We usually have, during the doubleheader weekends, one race is pretty calm, pretty clean. The other, pretty chaotic. So, we had one turnaround in Logan Bradley in that race on lap number one, and nothing else happened. You're ready to see maybe three, four, five cautions or more, especially with all the slower trucks up front. And that's not to say that all these guys that's finished at the back are slow. You got the 57 that's a pretty quick truck. The 60 is up near the front. So is Colton Lane. Uh, the 02, 71 are even pacey. So is the 01. Just bad luck during those races cost them time. And that's why they start back here. But you can't say that the R&D 96, the 03, the 07... The 02, the 32 aren't fast trucks, so we'll see how the faster guys work through. You might see some two, three, maybe even four wide moves coming down these long straightaways here at Pocono. We'll see how it goes, but without further ado, 
It's going to be a 40-lap event to finish off this uh, Crown Royal Truck Series weekend, the Cup Series up after it, but we're looking at the truck guys now. They're the stars of the show for another set of 40 laps. Cloud versus Reeves up front. Green flags in the air, and we're racing at Pocono. And Nelson Reeves wants to go lead this race for Impala. That would be shocking to see a Chevrolet that has not led a Crown Royal Truck Series race in three years plus. In the, and Nelson Reeves is trying to do it, but you saw Preston Emmons was making a big move. There goes Patrick Smith down to the bottom. There's three wide coming through here. This is not going to work out too cleanly as Cloud goes at it. Reeves is going to take the lead away in that 03 truck. And he's really driving it two and three wide there. But Nelson Reeves with a shot from Logan Bradley. Can Chevy lead their first truck race? in over three years he's holding up Bradley he's throwing it right in front of Bradley will he be able to lead him across the line for lap number one coming down the front straightaway Nelson Reeves leads the race for Impala and I think just as quickly as it happened it's going to be gone as Logan Bradley's going to line up right to the inside and take it just even still look at the straight line difference the 57 was past him already by the time they hit the corner Reeves now back to third, so his day in the sun is probably going to be over for Impala's 03. But what a drive there is Logan Bradley now uses that bad luck from the first race to get himself up to the front. Gatlin Downey, Mike Cook already having uh, some time off the back of the pack, just making sure there were no mechanical issues. And yeah, so the 19 and 81 are starting to be slow near the back, starting to lose some pace. Logan Cloud now catching up. He's all over the back of Bradley. Cloud was Bradley's old boss and has said that Bradley is an equipment driver in the past. Well, Cloud's in some pretty bad equipment right now in that 96, so I don't think he's going to be able to take the fight to him, but maybe Bradley will uh, show Cloud that he just pulled away from him, and maybe he will he won't look back, possibly win this race, but we're only two laps in. We're looking up front. You see the field. You see it's spreading out because you got the slower trucks up front keeping everyone together. Also, no one's spun yet, but... What you don't see is way at the back. William Duncan forced three wide. Stephen Wallace Jr., Eric Monaco, all the fast guys want to get up to the front as fast as they can. There is the line of pretty much your top five from last race. Cobza wasn't in that front pack. He was fighting in the second pack, but you got Smith, Eves, Peters, and Perez right in a row on the bottom. Three wide back here as Duncan is doing everything he can not to hit anyone. You also got Stephen Wallace Jr. back there. As long as they keep it fairly clean, they can make it work. You see Duncan dives to that outside line. And it's probably better to just be on the outside than be stuck in the middle three wide. You got so much time, uh, so many things you got to worry about with just having no room to go anywhere. But look at this pack here. Nelson Reeves in the 03. I think he just let Patrick Smith by, so that's about maybe six cars pulling away up front. One truck is on pit road. Gatlin Downey, so Downey already down pit road. As you see, I don't know where he is. Please tell me he's not going to merge right back up near the pack. No, he's right there. So Downey had a bad start to this. Don't know what it was. They just brought the 19 down, so not reported an issue but there is something wrong obviously with that 19 truck pitting already so he's still gonna have to pit again but i am just worried there's gonna be something happening back here three wide jay jefferson started this race top 10 he's already back outside of the top 20 in that 02 truck and really that's just a formality for everham it gives him a past champions provisional to make the race and there you don't expect a win out of this 02 truck you don't expect the top 30 out of the 02 truck but he did get it on TV. Look into the wide angle shot. You're looking through this as they're all fighting up there. Reeves is the one pretty much giving, giving the uh, trickle down here of the drivers up front. Logan Bradley first. Logan Cloud second. Mikey Yamakaze versus Colton Lane for third. Lane has that straight line advantage. Might be able to take it. Patrick Smith is fifth. Reed sixth. Roger Ray seventh. Vince Freeze eighth. Nicky Morris ninth. Zach Rogers throwing this nine truck into the top ten. As Reeves now drops back to about 13th. Could fall even further behind in that 03. But he's... Really, five laps in at a track that's this fast? I think that's pretty good for Impala. They got one lap led, and they're still hanging on uh, near the front in that 03 truck. He's just slowly dropping his way to the back. That's the other thing about this, too. There's a possibility. You see, guys, well, Eves jumped out of line. He's going to pick up a ton of spots. I don't even see where Alex Peters is uh, in the 45. I'm. Did Peters have an issue, or am I blind? I might be blind. Uh, I don't know where Alex Peters went. We'll look, uh, oh, there he is right there, the Dex Imaging. He was in the Dex Imaging colors, I couldn't tell, but he, okay, so Peters, Eves, they're starting to move through. 
Cobza, Antoine Smith, uh, Eli Bright, Jose Perez kind of trapped in this pack, and that's what you're going to see. You got to be able to work your way through the pack, and that's what is interesting about this race weekend. You need a front run car for at least the first one, but then you got to switch the setup completely to try to drive through the field and back up to the front. Logan Bradley, though, he set that car up pretty well for starting up front. And he gets to start up front in both. He probably didn't want to start up front in both. I'm sure he wanted to win st uh, the first one. He could have started last in the second one. But he could be on his way to winning this one. If we do see this race go green flag. And we already saw it once this weekend. So there is a possibility of that. Logan Bradley has six seconds already on the faster cars. He could easily just go on and win this race. We'll see what he does. We'll see how this race plays out. Uh, but... We'll see how that is. And Logan Cloud hanging on in second. I don't know if that's just showing. You got a lot of the underfunded teams up front still. You got the part-time BGM. You got the two of the slower CFRO trucks, even though Patrick Smith, pretty competitive. You got KG, uh, KGM. You got JSR up here, MJM. There's a 24 with Matheson. It's running pretty well, but MJM's still up here. So you got still a lot of the slower trucks working their way up front and pacing on around. And that's really given Alex Peters, Matthew Eves, a ton of time to think about this. So he goes three wide with Reeves and Sladek. I think Reeves now on that very outside is Aiden Smith's going to get into him, and they're going to get sideways coming off. Reeves is just up top. He knows, you know, get out of the way as best as he can. And uh, this part of the track right here especially, with the back straightaway having the grass, and I think William Duncan just got punted by Riley Spurley too back there. He's going to be into the wall, goes the 82. I don't know if there was contact or something. I just saw that car rocket up to the outside. But there's pretty much your your top 15 or so in the point standings. Your championship contenders, Alex Peters on back. Peters is only up to 15th so far after eight laps. That's all the guys that are fighting for these championships. Now they got to try to work their way, pick their way through some of this pack to catch on up to Logan Bradley, who's leading this race with Colton Lane second. Logan Cloud now dropping to third. Yamakaze fourth, going to just squeeze in front of Patrick Smith. Smith in fifth. Vince, uh, Vince Freeze sixth. Ray seventh. Rogers eighth. Anderson Reed ninth. And Nicky Morris tenth. Logan Bradley has led seven of the eight laps so far in this event as he comes around to complete lap number eight. We're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break right off the bat in this one. Logan Bradley out in front is all of the back markers. Try to shuffle through as the front guys come towards the front. Logan Bradley out in front over Colton Lane, Logan Cloud, uh, Mikey Yamakaze, and Patrick Smith in your top five. Back live here at the Reese's 300 as we got all 40 trucks still running in this race. One car, one lap down. That's Gatlin Downey who come, came down pit road pretty early on. Take a pit stop, service that vehicle. Out in front, it's Logan Bradley. Patrick Smith now clearing that CFRO 94 into second. And this could be big for him and Vince Freeze who sits back in fifth. Two trucks that definitely have the power to win races this season. They're charging now up towards the front on Logan Bradley. You also got Zach Rogers, TSR's number nine. He's been pretty much the third string at TSR so far this season. Solidly in the 20th position in points. Eli Bright, even with his bad finish yesterday, still is 14th in points. And Matthew Eves is your points leader. So Rogers trying to pick up as much as he can as they're three wide behind him. Reed, Nicky Morris, and uh, Logan Cloud on the outside. There's Gunnar Matheson, Jesse Turner. And if you look just a little further back in 14th and 15th, there is Eves and Peters, two of the guys who pretty much uh, were up front that entire race. And now Matthew Eves trying to go up there and win this race in the NRG 40, 48. He wants to now that Jose Perez is nowhere near him in this one. But Eves is now going to take that spot, maybe trying to take that 14th position away. They go at it. But you also got Matt Sladek, Aiden Smith. Here's the 44 and 98. They both finished top 10 in yesterday's race. Stephen Wallace Jr., Daniel Cobza, Ryan Butcher as well. Yep, as his drop back. But there's on Jack now. You got Jose Perez... Perez and Antoine are having a bit of a struggle getting through the traffic now. Uh, Perez is just going to take that spot away from Vargas. That's going to be the 25th position to Perez. He's going to shoot right down to the inside of Emmons, try to take that spot as well. So a big move by Perez now. Uh, but as you see, we'll go to the wide angle shot heading down into one. The f that front group is now starting to kind of spread out. Not really single file. But they are definitely starting to split up in front of them. And if you have to battle anyone, you might just want to battle one or two instead of a whole pack like they were. So now you see the 35-00 have cleared most of the hubbub, most of the ruckus. And now they can go ahead and start taking guys down 
one at a time as they move through the field. Eli Bright, that truck not handling well. They repaired it. Uh, there was not too much damage, but they tr they were working on the wheel well all last night, the rear wheel, uh, that was all torn up from uh, that. They didn't want to have to go to a backup because it was a bit more money on that team. Plus, uh, they have a great setup on this 8-track. They showed it, but it, it really looks like that team's not running too well right now. They're still struggling to get past some guys. William Duncan was, I think, punted out of the way earlier. Eric Monaco, Austin Johnson also have not made any ground. Neither has Alex Fletcher. And now Nelson Reeves is back with Mike Cook. Uh, pretty much like he was in yesterday's event. Patrick Smith clearing to second. Freeze and Lane starting to push together. Now you see Eves and Peters. They're starting to catch up to that backpack. But now you're seeing your 13 laps into this race. Remember back to Chicago Land last year in the doubleheader. Uh, we had Rockstar Energy Racing win the race after starting most of their cars up front due to the invert. So now you're seeing guys... Like, like the guys up front. The top three right here behind Bradley are all competitive cars. So is Zach Rogers. But you got guys like Yamakaze, Ray, uh, Nicky Morris, Gunnar Matheson, Logan Cloud. They're going to be fighting tooth and nail. Anderson Reed, McShane as well. They're, all these guys in front are now going to be fighting you tooth and nail. They have the pace. They know they have the pace to hang on near the front of the pack. And now that you're going to have to fight and claw for those spots now as Eves is just going to get by Reed. Looks like McShane was going up. Now she jocks back down. Matt Sladek also kind of staying with these guys. There's Cobbs of the rest of the field working on through. Now, as we said, you know... All Antoine and Perez needed was some trucks to kind of spread out in front of them so they could just dive to the inside and make moves. Perez is now starting to close in on the 48 and 45 further up. You also got the 28 of Spurly Tube, 98 of uh, Stephen Wallace Jr. right up there as well. But you got to remember in the truck race yesterday in the Hershey's 300, uh, the leaders, the top four, were the class of the field, those being Eves, who led those 22 laps. You had Perez lead the last 13, and you had Antoine Smith, Alex Peters. They were about six or seven seconds up on the rest of the grid after they formed together. And right now, Logan Bradley is about two seconds up, but now 1.5. As you see, that is not good for him. You got two NBM trucks and a CFRO truck, all pretty fast, all much faster than pretty much anyone else that was around him so far. And now they're single file drafting up to him at a draft heavy track. So this could be big for Logan Bradley. His time in front might be coming to a close here. Is now Vince Freeze, though. He's going to go for second. Might think that 60 truck is much faster drive through. And this is another guy that's really looking to turn his season around. He's 19th in points. He has the win at California. A second win, though, could give him the precedent in the wild card spot because he'd have two wins over everyone else with one. He's 19th in points. He needs a good finish today, taking advantage of this invert, or he could be very far out from getting a chance at the wild card spot, possibly falling outside of the top 20, which is where you need to be to get a wild card slot. Mikey Yamakaze was the first one in in the pit road uh, in yesterday's race. He's moved up. Zach Rogers again, staying up near the front. There you see Eves now all over the back of Jesse Turner, Priya McShane, trying to work with anyone to get around him. And once this 48 gets up front into clean air, it's probably going to be game over, especially now as he's starting to pull away a little bit from Alex Peters right there in that 45 track. So there's Peters. Now you got Cobza. They're working past Reed and Cloud. Ryan Butcher's in that. Spurly Tube, Aiden Smith, and you look a little further back. There's Perez uh, on Jack, uh, Antoine Smith, and a bunch more of those faster trucks. Eli Bright, Austin Johnson finally starting to tear their way through. Monaco Duncan, a bit of the faster guys with Fletcher. They're still stuck at the back. As we saw in yesterday's race, the pits, pits, pit window really opens around lap 20, so you still got some time left before you need to pit. Gatlin Downey already off cycle in that 19. I don't think he's going to be able uh, to stay out the rest of the race after coming in on, I believe, lap 4. I don't think he's going to have enough time to make it back down pit road, but uh, so he's probably going to be trapped a lap down unless some uh, shenanigans during pit road happen. We get a caution. But Logan Bradley's out in front, and he's been maintaining that front pace. Those faster guys behind him starting to slowly and slowly close in, especially Eves has gained three seconds on Bradley while working his way through the pack in the last, I think, 10 or so laps uh, since the last time we checked that interval. So, you got, uh, as Lane's going to bounce off the wall there in 27, that's going to give Patrick Smith the third position. Logan Bradley's now starting to be caught by Vince Freeze. Freeze is hungry for a win because he knows it could guarantee him a chase spot. Patrick Smith is hungry for a win, not because it's a chase spot, but because this has been a bad season for him. He's 23rd in points so far, while CFRO's other drivers are 9th and 11th in the standings with one win to SWJ. He's trying to hang on. Colton Lane, Mikey Yamakaze, 
Uh, Zach Rogers there. Here's Matthew Eves now. He's caught up to Roger Ray, Jesse Turner. Turner actually stayed in front of him, pulling away. So Turner, he's a top-tier car. This is an Ange Auto car, so it's probably the same uh, around the same speed as that 9 that's ahead of him. So those those trucks are fast, but they're kind of the uh, also-rans here this season so far for Ange Auto. Yes, Turner has a win. He almost won South Boston, but other than that, it's been a pretty abysmal year for the 47, just tanking his way through the standings all the way down to 16th so far after just seven races after starting uh, out first at Daytona. So Turner's trying to hang on up front. So is Zach Rogers. They're trying to gain some points here to get back into the title fight. Matthew Eves wants to get his second win of the year, try to break that streak. And out of the guys in front of him, only Jesse Turner is the other one with a win this season in the truck series. Alex Peters working to the inside of Matheson. I don't know if he'll get there. And that is pretty bad. You see, look at the Wendy's truck all the way back there with the Stanley a couple cars back uh, pulling out of line. I don't think if this race goes green, I think Eves is going to win this thing. I, I'm i almost 100% sure. You see the gap has come down now to two and a half seconds between him and the leader. And I don't think any of these trucks ahead of him can even compete with him. Not even Zach Rogers in that TSR 9. There, you easily know that the 48 is a much better truck than the 9 uh, is their TSR. Now Eves has made his way up to the 7th position in the NRG 48. Looking for 6th on Jesse Turner. Going to really dive it in. I think possibly the only guy who could stop him that's in front of him is this 47 of Turner. The other 5 aren't fast enough. Bradley might be if he can, uh, if he can really put the pedal to the metal. Uh, possibly if we see anything after pit stops as we are closing in on the halfway point, which will be pit stops soon. But I think only this 47 is the only one left in front of the 48 that's going to give him any problems. And he gave him a problem for about half a, half a course, half a run around this triangle because Eve's just over right past him into one. Patrick Smith now going at Logan Bradley for the race lead. The X94 driver versus the current 94 driver. We'll see what these guys can do as they head into one or head into turn two, the tunnel turn here. And Bradley's going to stay out in front for now. But as we said, we're coming to pit stops. Either these guys are going to have to have an absolutely amazing pit stop or there's going to be something that's going to have to go wrong for the 48 because Alex Peters has stalled out in the second half of that uh, second half of that top group. Actually, yeah, he's right there in 11th. He can't get around Gunnar Matheson. So that's already a, maybe a second or two ahead of Peters. He's so far ahead of Perez and Antoine Smith. So I think at this point it is Matthew Eve's race to lose. And that's kind of weird to say because he, he's not in the lead yet. He hasn't led the race all day, but he's charged through the field. And as I said, I don't think anyone, I don't think that NBM, CFRO, or ZR have anything for the 48. I think it's going to be this 47 of Jesse Turner, but he's going to have to really step up and run pretty well in this race. Vince Freeze going at it for the lead against Logan Bradley. No one but Bradley and Reeves have led a lap today at least until pit stops are going to happen. So Bradley's maintaining. He has a great front-running truck in that 57. He had the pace to stay up here this whole time, uh, but I don't think he's going to have the pace to hold back Eves as Eves is now going to take that fourth position on Colton Lane and charge him through the field, just like Jefferson did last season. Jefferson started fairly far back uh, in the grid, came back up and won the race. So we'll see what they do here. He is in the fifth position, 21 of 40 complete. See if anyone comes down pit road this time. The first driver came down last time. That was Mikey Yamakazi came down uh, on lap 21. He, no one will this time. So you can make it to about lap 25 on the field, 25 to 26, depending on how much you've been pushing. Of course, the uh, 96 and 03 were showing that you could do a lot more than that on one pit stop uh, there if you were, I guess, an underpowered equipment. As Vince Freeze all over the back of Bradley here for the race lead. So we'll probably be seeing pit stops, if not this time by, probably next time by, or one more time around after that. So you see Eves is going at it for the fourth position with Lane. That front pack, though, starting to converge back together. You see Alex Peters is just at the edge of that. I think Roger Ray just got into the back of Yamakaze. I thought I saw some debris fly off the uh, 90 and 01 as they got close there. Here comes Eves now. He's going to drag race the 27 off the corner. I think that the uh, 48 will just completely outpace him, and especially, though, with Zach Rogers going up and uh, helping him there in that number nine, giving his teammate a bit of a push towards the front. Rogers has been concerned about the TSR team. He uh, still has not won in the series, neither has Roger Ray, so I guess that's uh, the TSR and Ange Auto guys that just uh, are getting these truck rides, getting these top series rides, doing all right in them. I mean, Roger's been doing all right in him, but he just does not have 
a first career win yet. Could not get it in his Mountain Dew Custom Series campaign last year. Got promoted to the truck, the Digital Storm number 9. Uh, got a full season sponsorship on it. It's very rare to see that in these top series of competition. And the Mountain Dew Custom Series is pretty much required for sponsors to run the full season. Caution is out. And that is going to change everything right before pit stops. And these guys are coming in. These guys are coming down, so this, I don't know what's going to go on there. Uh, but as, as we have, we have set precedent before that pit stops can't really, due to the limitations here, I don't really penalize uh, closed pit pit stops. Uh, Peter Onjak goes around and looks like, oh, Perez and Aiden Smith came in already. Jose Perez, if he's on the lead lap, Perez is on the lead lap. If he doesn't pit, he might be your race leader. Yepes also already came in. On Jack's car torn up. He's going to be done. Eves is coming back out. So is Rogers, Jesse Turner, Colton Lane. So these four will be good to go. Good to go there. Bradley Smith, Freeze, Peters. Everyone else is going to come on in. Obviously, you're going to come on in. But I think Jesse Turner, not Jesse Turner, Jose Perez. I'm pretty sure he's going to be ahead of all of these guys. At least he should be. They were on pit road. Maybe he is, and maybe... Oh, no, he's going to lose some time there. So, Eves, Perez, Lane, Aiden Smith, Zach Rogers, Jesse Turner, Diego Yepes all, all already came in and took their tires and fuel. And Gatlin Downey, he's just going to pace on around. He, he is not coming in. Uh, he's a lap down, so he'll have to wait. But everyone else is now going to bring it on in. And we will see... What this strategy call will be here. It's it's four tires and fuel, obviously, especially under caution. You're not going to lose too much time. Uh, but we're looking way back here. And there you see Eves continuing on around. Okay, uh, something's going on here. Okay, Perez got to let Lane by. Yeah, so these guys have to let those guys by. Turner just don't hit the wall or anyone. So these seven will still be out on track. There is Eves in the 48. And it's been a bit of a... I guess, controversial rule for the NSDCA uh, on that. We've had a lot of pit road mishaps. You saw Spurly Tube. He came in uh, when the pits closed at Las Vegas. They didn't penalize him then. Uh, we had some issues. I forget what it was. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had some issues with the same thing. Uh, there were no penalties given for that. So I think the NSDCA is going to rule here again. No, no issue on that. And... That is wild that they that these guys are not able to go up ahead of the rest of them because they were fighting for those spots. So Colton Lane might be. This is this is a whacked. This is a very crazy start. I don't know what has just happened in this race. Pit stops have confused literally everyone. I don't know if these guys are get, get, going to be able to go by. We'll let them sort out. It was four tires and fuel for everyone. We'll get a quick replay on your screen. What happened to Peter Onjak to bring out the first caution of the weekend. First incident of the day here. Peter Onjak coming down the back straightaway. He's in a pack with Austin Johnson, Larry Hagan, and more. Going three wide into the corner underneath Duncan and Reed. Johnson's going to hook him coming in and puts that 97 straight on into the outside wall. Some heavy damage to the CFRO number 97 there. On board with Austin Johnson. As you see, he's just going to come straight down the track. Uh, on him into this corner and just hook that 97 as he goes through the corner. Big hit to Onjak. First caution of the day here at Pope. So coming back around. It's going to be 13 to go. Matthew Eves gets the race lead off of some crazy rulings coming off of pit road there i have no words to really describe that but patrick smith now sits second logan bradley third vince freeze fourth alex peters fifth roger ray sixth gunner matheson seventh mikey yamakazi eighth daniel cobbs a ninth riley spurley tube in tenth pre mcshane's 11th dickie morris is 12th eli bright 13th antoine smith 14th ryan butcher 15th sladek morris stephen wallace jr duncan and colton lane sits 20th hagan monaco rogers reed turner perez uh, Vargas, Aiden Smith, Fletcher, Yepes, Matthew Brown, Preston Emmons, Jay Jefferson, Mike Cook, Logan Cloud, Maxwell Fay, 
Nelson Reeves, Austin Johnson, Peter Onjak, and back on the lead lap with the free pass. The Fago free pass goes to Gatlin Downey in the 19 truck. So we're sitting here. Matthew Eves leads the race now in that 48 by playing some crazy strategy calls in that 48 truck. Patrick Smith ends up second. Logan Bradley third. Vince Freeze fourth. Alex Peters fifth. Sixth, Roger Ray. Seventh is Matheson. Eighth, Yamakaze. Ninth, Cobbs. And tenth, Spurly Tube. If anyone's going to stop Je Eves, it's going to have to be either Peters, Spurly Tube, or Cobbs, probably. Patrick Smith, Logan Bradley, Vince Freeze. A lot of the guys up front, they have competitive trucks, but nothing. You need the best to stop the 48 on a speed-based track. Coming down the front straightaway. Let's see who will be out in front at the end of this one. 13 to go. Green flags in the air. And we're racing at Pocono. Thought Patrick Smith got a pretty good restart. He looked to the top, the bottom, just couldn't get any moves done. Coming to the restart as he sends Eves, throws Eves in there with some draft. And Eves is going to get a better exit off the corner. Bradley's going to jump to the inside. Already Eves is going to open up some gap there. And now it's smooth sailing for the 48 that really could not be passed yesterday except for the double zero and the 35. Now Eves is going to pull away into the race lead in that 48 truck. Alex Peters is going to clear himself to fourth. Patrick Smith up the track is going to bounce off the wall. That's going to allow the ZR duo of Bradley and Peters now. They're going to go at it as Eves pulls away in the 48 truck. And coming on through, Eves is gone. Look at the gap he just opened up through turn three. There is no way anyone's catching him now. The 94 is parking the bus, just cannot get a run done. I don't know what Smith is doing, but now Alex Peters is going to go to the inside. Bradley to the outside. And Patrick Smith just stacked up this whole front group. Gunnar Matheson holds him up as well. All these slower guys up front now starting to play with the race leaders as Bradley now in second is going to have to try to chase down the fastest truck on the grid in Matthew Eves in the 48. And Alex Peters got no exit at all. This pack is not racing together to go catch up as now Peters and Ray going to make some contact. Thought Cobbs was about to make it four wide there. But now you got Logan Bradley in the 57. He's going to have to try to catch up. To the race leader there. Vince Freeze back there in third now clears. Gunnar Matheson with Patrick Smith up the on the outside. Cobbs in the middle. Uh, Alex Peters in the middle. Spurly Tube Roger Ray back there as well. And it's all Matthew Eves out in front. We'll see how far ahead he is that time. 1.17, 1.28, gaining a tenth a lap. It looks like that's going to be all they wrote. But still a long way to go. Two and a half miles with ten laps left next time by. Still got two miles left this time by. Vince Freeze now all over the back of Bradley. Mat Matheson's up to fourth. Cobza is fifth. Spurly Tube's up there. Antoine Smith also charging. I think it's going to be too little too late for any of them. Perez is not happy in the 35 with whatever went, of, uh, went on on that restart. He's dropped back now. Is Antoine Smith, they're going to go three wide with Bright on the inside trying to make something happen. And now Vince Freeze has cleared his way into the second position. Will Freeze be able to get up there and chase down Matthew Eves? Bradley third, Matheson fourth, Cobbs a fifth, Alex Peters sixth, seventh, Patrick Smith eighth, Spurly Tube ninth, Roger Ray tenth, Antoine Smith. Now we're seeing what was the gap that time, as that is the wrong way to do that. 1.07, so Freeze might have a drafting capable truck. He pulled up on Logan Bradley under that last green flag run. Let's see if Freeze can pull up to Matthew Eves on this one. And you got to remember, even if you have a fast enough truck, in the truck race yesterday, they were all spread out real quick. No one was really in a pack except at the very back. This time it's a restart. Everyone's packed together. You, I don't know if you're going to be able to pull away that far this time around. As now Vince Freeze has caught up to Eves big time in that 48 truck. Now Gunnar Matheson going at it back there for the third position. Can the 24 team take it to victory lane? We got two Fords in the top five and none of them are Alex Peters. That'd be a big win for any of them because I think the last driver to win in a Ford that wasn't Alex Peters might have been this man in Logan Bradley in the 57. Freeze lost a bit of time there, though. Antoine Smith, Riley Spurly Tube starting the charge. Cobza and Peters looking right behind him. Bradley, do not make a move on Freeze. Freeze can help you get up there to that 48 truck. I don't think the 57 has the pace on it. The 60 might, but here comes the bigger threats. Cobza in the 44 is up to fourth. Alex Peters carrying with him in fifth in that 45. Those two could be the big threat to Eves as this race goes on. 
And Alex P just really looked to the inside on Kobza. Kobza uh, throws the block on him. Here comes Spurly Tube. Remember, he's almost won a couple races this season. He and Onjak are the two that everyone's been waiting to break back into victory lane. Can the Coldstone Creamery 28 get up there? As Logan Bradley goes at it for second, Bradley, you got to remember, you need a truck capable of getting up to the 48 first to then get around Vince Freeze and them. Now they're side by side. That's going to give the 48 some breathing room, and Eves is going to pull back out to a bit of a lead once again. Now, as you see Antoine Smith working on Patrick further back, Antoine trying to get that number double zero back up into this top hunt. Peters and Cobbs are going side by side. Everyone going side by side is music to Matthew Eve's ears as he's going to pull back away in that 48 truck. And Logan Bradley being a bit stubborn there. And that's what we've seen a lot of this season. You know, we had it at Richmond. We had it, I think, last week at I-69. We've had it multiple times. You fight for second and you forget about the guy that's pulling away in the race lead that's been unstoppable almost all race. And you let him go on and win the race. So now these guys, you got to work together, especially at a draft track like this. And Logan Bradley is just losing them time in that 57 truck. He is costing this whole group behind him a bunch of time. As now Freeze is going to go back to the inside. Combs in that 44 has a very capable truck. He qualified second to Eves in qualifying for yesterday's event, the start of this doubleheader weekend. As Alex Peters and Combs make some contact. Here comes Spurly Tube into this, and they are going to dispatch Logan Bradley quickly now. Freeze clears into second. Alex Peters is going to clear into third. And Spurly Tube wants to take that spot away in fourth as Bradley is going to drop back in that 57. Cobbs is going to dump down behind him as well. So they just dispatched the 57 quick. He's now possibly going to fall out of this top five as they go. But now Alex Peters on the back of him. And if I'm putting my money on anyone, it might be Alex Peters to go catch up to that 48 truck as he dives it in for second. I think Freeze thinks the same thing. They're going to take that spot. But don't count out Spurly Tube. Daniel Cobza and Antoine Smith is bringing that double zero up here. Here comes Eli Bright as well. There is Sladek and Perez. Trapped in the pack is not going to sweep this weekend. So the doubleheader streak of sweeping the doubleheader race is probably going to be over. Eves, though, now a very far margin, 1.2 seconds ahead. We'll see if Peters, Vince Freeze, if anyone, can catch up to him in six more laps. Early Tube Cobbs are fighting back there. That's the battle for that third position. Eves pulling away. Now you got Spurly Tube. Cobbs are right on the back of him. So it gets sent into the corner. Freeze is going to get dispatched now. So here comes the faster trucks charging up. The question is, do they have enough time to do so? As Alex Peters and Riley Spurly Tube are going to try everything they can to catch and pass this 48. Eves dominated the Pocono race yesterday. He's dominating this one today now that he's gotten into the race lead. But the question is, you know, Eves got out and he got to lead this race while everyone else who came down basically at the same time got trapped in the back. So is the NSDCA going to have to look at some rules here possibly for actually enforcing the closed pits thing uh, coming to cautions? So maybe that'll be the thing there. We might have to add that penalty into the system here, but Eves is leading, and there is nothing in the rule book that says it yet, so he is free to go up here and possibly win this race. Alex Peters chasing him down in second, Spurly Tube third, Kobza up to fourth, and Antoine Smith in the double zero. He sits in the fifth spot. Eli Bright trying to get a top ten after a great recovery now. Whatever happened to that eight truck, it's really fast. And you see Freeze and Bradley have been dropped, so I don't think these guys were too happy with them holding them up, and I think that's going to be what cost them, because right now, Eves is continuing to pull away. 1.31 last time by 1.05. So he gained three tenths. So, but he still he still has a second ahead of him. And then you got to go up there and pass him. Four laps to go. Okay, Alex Peters, Riley Spurly, will they be able to get up there? Peters might be able to sniff the draft of that now. Cobza up to fourth, Antoine Smith fifth. So here comes the fast guys, the guys that were fighting in the top 10 all yesterday's race are now up in front. Freeze, Bright, Gunner, Matheson, Bradley. That second half is a bit, bit of a different one. Look at Stephen Wallace Jr. in the 98 charging through the field as well. He's up at, almost into the top 10 as McShane bounces off the wall. And William Duncan is back inside the top 20 in that 82 fighting in the 17th spot. But we're going back up to the front because the battle right now is Eves versus Alex Peters, and if Peters has enough to get up there into the draft and win. 
He's gaining two tenths now, so he's gaining on Eves, but it's not going to be enough. You got three laps to go. If you catch him at three tenths, sure. If you catch him at two tenths, no. You also have Spurly two back there. Oh, Peters looks like he went real low through that corner. I don't think he does not get an exit at all. Spurly tube's going to get it, and I think that's going to be it now as Alex Peters, the Zachary Racing guys, are not playing. They are playing for the Dodge teams right now because now Spurly tube has to go to the outside. That's costing them both time. And that's going to cost them a chance at a win right there. They're still side by side. And I think that's it. Two laps to go this time by Eves. Looking to be the first repeat winner of the season in this number 48 truck. ESR has been, had a ton of bad luck in the Cup Series so far. It's been a pretty bad season for all of them combined. In the trucks, they're kicking off. Eves is your current points leader. And as you see there, they just lost seven tenths fighting side by side like that. That's it. You're not going to gain a second and a half in two laps without something going wrong. Eves in the 48 is out in front and gone. Spurly Tube's going to try everything he can in the Coldstone Creamery 28. I don't think the Salva Racing team has anything for TSR. Eves has shown it, it was a questionable move to put Eves in here. They thought he was just a super speedway guy. He won Kentucky this year. Now he's looking to win at Pocono. Spurly Tube looked like he gained a lot, but he threw it away into turn two. Eves is coming through the final corner. As long as he sees the green flag out, it will be race good for him. As they come through turn number three, white flag is in the air. The 48 truck of Matthew Eves leads this race. And it's looking like he's going to be on his way to his second win of the season. Caution is out. We're going to Greenway Checkered. Yellow flag is out. What happened? Jesse Turner goes around and we... This race is on its head and now Eves is not guaranteed to win this race. And we got to take a look back. I thought he took the white flag. Whatever it is, we'll discuss it when we go back racing. The NSDCA is asking for a quickie yellow, so we're going to get a quick replay. Bring you guys back to the action for the conclusion of this race. One truck. No, one truck's fine. Eves thought he had this race won. Now he's going to have to fight for two more laps. Heading to a green-white checkered from this incident, Matthew Brown in the 16 is going to run right into the back of the 47 of Turner. Spins Turner around, knocks the 16 also into the wall. Second caution of the day at Pocono. Right here is the moment of caution. Maybe 50 feet from the start-finish line. The flagman has the white flag in his hands, but it is not the flagman that decides it. It is the caution lights on the sides. And we're going into overtime here at Pocono. The NSTCA asked for a quickie yellow, and that is what we shall get. It is Matthew Eves in the race lead over... Riley Spurly Tube, Alex Peters, Eli Bright, and Antoine Smith. If Eves does not win, second, third, and fourth could extend the streak. Sixth could also extend the streak. Smith, uh, Smith, Freeze, and Eves have all won a race this season. Eves has had a jump. He had a great jump on that. But now he has Riley Spurly Tube right behind him. Don't count out Alex Peters. Don't count out Eli Bright who after repairing that car overnight for that team is now in the fourth position in that eight truck. Antoine Smith, fifth. Matt Sladek inside the top ten. He's ninth for that zero team. Gunnar Matheson, tenth. Still up here, but it's going to be two laps to decide it. If we get the white flag, the race ends on that next time by. If not, we rack them back up for another attempt. We have three attempts at green-white checkered finishes. Now what you're seeing... These guys pit around lap 24. The most you could go is 48. You go back green, caution again. We probably go back racing. It's 45 and 46 would be the laps we'd be on. So they can do maybe one more overtime attempt and then it'd be pushing it. But we'll see what Eves will do on this restart over Spurly Tube, Peters and Bright. Will they work together to get around the 48? Will they let the 48 ride off into the sunset? What will happen? Two laps to go. In the Reese's 300, green flag is back in the air. We're racing once again at Pocono. And they're all going to abandon 
Riley Spurley tube down into the corner, and that is what Eves wanted to see on this restart. The battle for second is what has been costing race winners this entire season. And there you see Eves just shot out like a cannon in that 48. But he's slow. He comes off the corner with no exit speed. Peters is going to get the shove from Bright to the inside. And there goes Alex Peters soaring by the 48. Two to go next time. It's going to be the white flag this time by. But Alex Peters just got the shove of his life from Eli Bright up to the race lead. Now Eves has to fight back on top. And he's going to. He's going to fight right a tooth and nail against Eli Bright. Eves clears back into second as Alex Peters leads this race. But as Peter, Peters is coming to pit road. They're running out of fuel at the end. And now who's going to win it? Who has enough fuel to make it to the end? Now as Logan Bradley, ZR Racing, both of them are out. Eli Bright's leading him down. We're still under green. Well, it's Eves leading him down. But Bright's in second. Spurly Tube's making the move. And that might have just cost him. That might give Eves the win again. A handful of trucks run out at the end. There you see him back there. Back up front. Eli Bright now chasing down. Matthew Eves, Spurly Tube disappears from the battle. Bright is going to carry some momentum down the back, though. Jumps to the inside. Does he have anything for teammate Matthew Eves? He's going to have two more corners to go if he can get there. Looks to the bottom. He's going to go for it. Into turn number two. Looks to the inside. Will he get there as Eves carries it up the track? Eli Bright trying to win this race and extend the windless, uh, the different winner's streak. One more corner to go. Bright's going to send it in. Eves throws the block. And it's not going to happen now. Matthew Eves is going to come through. Turn number three. He's going to hold on at the end. They threw everything at him. Matthew Eves for the 48 team is going to win the Reese's 300 at Pocono. And as this race has gone on, of course, the one guy that can get by Matthew Eves in this event Runs it out of fuel. Jay Jefferson down pit road. They ran that 02 out of fuel. Eves is now out of fuel. You see the car slowly coasting. He is out of fuel. Uh, I'm sure TSR is going to run a fuel man out to the front straightaway to get him uh, some fuel to do a burnout. Looks like Sladek's also out. So these guys were pushing it to the end. If we had another caution, probably wouldn't have happened. But Matthew Eves will be your first repeat winner of the season. The TSR 48 continues to be back on top in the Crown Royal Truck Series. Probably should have won yesterday's race as well. Perez got there. Eves brings home the victory in the NRG 48. And Eli Bright, after a horrible season, came up just short, threw it in, tried to get there. Comes home in second, very close in that eight truck. And we'll see what Eli does uh, the remainder of the year. But had a great run there, 40th to second, almost completed the last to first. And you see all of these guys that are now out of fuel just pacing on round. Looks like most of the field is. So they were pushing it just short on that fuel window. But a good call by all of these crews, all of the crew members, uh, to pit just late enough that if we did have a green-white checkered, uh, they'd be able, most of them at least, would be able to make it to the end. Matthew Eves comes out with the race win. Eli Bright comes home second, and it is... Uh, the number 28 of Riley Spurly tube third. So Dodge, one, two, three. Dodge has still been the king here in the truck series, and that will not change this weekend with two Dodge victories, Jose Perez and Matthew Eves. Antoine Smith fought, fought hard up to fourth. Vince Freeze comes home fifth. Butcher, Cobza, Matheson, Stephen Walls Jr. with a great run through the field. Sladek in 10th. Perez ends up 14th. Well, that was a crazy race. A lot of things happened there. Some fuel strategy changes, some fuel strategy calls. The caution came out at the right time to give him enough fuel to make it to the end, but not for everyone. A wild finish to this race here. Matthew Eves picks up his second win of the season, and it looks like he is possibly a rightful driver to be in that 48 truck. Alex Peters got by him, but ran out of fuel on the last lap. A wild finish to this one. We got 60 laps of the Cup Series coming up tomorrow. Hope to see you guys there. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time on the NSDCA.